Hello guys, welcome to 3ds Max News for the month of May. We will start with Match Roger, create this albedo generator. Basically, you can remove the sims directly in OSL. It's free for grabs, so download it. Normally you would do this in Photoshop, but now you can do it directly in OSL, that is great. Not only remove sims, also if you have any repetition, it will remove it. It's kind of like a high pass in Photoshop, really handy. In the OSL group in Facebook, Matt as well, has been posting different tests. Here you have a complete ocean made with only one polygon, all the displacement, the ray trace, it's done with OSL, as well the fog. So it shows the capacity that you have right now with the OSL implementation in 3ds Max. And also from Matt, update the Arnold Ambient Occlusion Light Filter, it's updated to be able to support Arnold 6. Basically, it's an ambient occlusion applied to your light. It will work with Max, Maya, Houdini, and Cinema 4D. Totally free. Jake Denman published different tips and tricks on his blog. There are as well videos. It will showcase how to improve your workflows, make it faster, using some scripts, and different tips and tricks for interiors and other stuff in 3ds Max. Pulse Scene Manager has been updated to 1.5. It has support for Max 2021, V-Ray 5 Beta, Arnold, and Redshift. It has a refreshed UI, dark theme, updates to the HDRI module. It costs 550 pounds a month. Thinking Particles Drop 9 was released last month. We get a small improvements. It covers different bug fixes, and as well, final render instancing works much better now. You will be able to instance millions of objects. Remember that on Effective Technical Directors, I create a complete course with 40 tutorials covering thinking particles. And I realized I messed up with one of the tutorials. So now you had a new tutorial covering fireworks in thinking particles. I think it's very good for everyone that is curious how thinking particles works. It's really easy, and I think it's easy to follow. Pull down it has been updated to 4.8. It has shattering speed improvements, path-based shatter improvements, the selection of jaggy polys is more regular, and other improvements that you should check out. Arda Kudli released Tick Manager 3. It's a free pipeline manager tool, really interesting because we don't have so many pipeline manager tools and free. It supports Maya, Max, Houdini, and Nuke. It has an asset lab library support, transfer assets between software, UI improvements, supports Metal Ray, V-Ray, Arnold, and Redshift. Totally free for personal and commercial use. Really interesting. V-Ray 5 Beta 2 is available for 3ds Max. Now you have different improvements. The V-Ray Sync Converter now includes a converter from physical material to V-Ray material. There are several improvements on the new virtual frame buffer. And for me, one of the most important, V-Ray Proxy now supports common particle interface for Alembic that can be used with V-Ray Instancer and Phoenix FD, if you don't know what it means. Uh, last month, I created a tutorial on Effective Technical Director using our tool Storm. We export Alembic files without mesh. It's only position data. I import this back into Arnold and then we render it because we only have position Arnold renders as a spheres. And this was happening as well in V-Ray. V-Ray was only rendering as a spheres and you could not do anything else. But now, because it supports the particle interface, you can use a scattering. So you can scatter any object instead of a spheres. You can use frost, you can use time measure. It's much more versatile. And I hope that this happens as well in Arnold and other applications. Really good. The guys from Corona are teasing us with some of the improvements that will come in Corona 6. You can see some insights for the Corona new Sky model, that it has different advanced features. Don't say much, only that looks better, obviously. You can see the video on YouTube. D5 Renderer has been updated to 1.6. It's a real-time engine that combines ray tracing and rasterization techniques. You will need an RTX card, obviously, to make it work. It's an independent app, but you have an exporter available for 3ds Max. The updates include a library for assets, simplified material templates, improvements to the GI, memory usage, speed, and other stuff. You have a free community version of the software that includes a lot of the features of the commercial product. And you have a paid perpetual license with free updates for life for $480. And the demo reel of the month is for Scanline Visual Effects. 
It's a demo reel for 2020. I have been working with a scanline visual effects for more than five years now, and I am super happy to be part of this big family. A lot of talented people working from all around the world. We had some of the best artists from on all departments. Uh, I am working on the effects department. We are very well known for the liquid simulations that we are using Flowline, our proprietary software for fluids. Uh, we use it for liquids, smoke, fire, and you will see a lot of that on the demo reel. And as well on the effects department, we use a lot 3ds Max and we use it a lot for lighting and on the generalist department. It's a big part of a Skyland pipeline and I hope that you enjoy this demo reel. A lot of hours put on it, not sleeping uh, to finish some of these shots. A new modifier, Radial Symmetry Modifier by Polydesign. Basically, you can do parametrical clones and a slice of objects by rotating or mirroring them. It costs $29 and it's really useful, as you can see, to create all types of parametric modeling and abstract animations as well, if you want. And it's the tie flow section. Tyson has been on fire this month. We had a new VDB toolkit. We had all types of things that you can do with VDBs. You can mesh particles, you have adaptivity, you have Boolean VDBs. You can as well use it to store 3D filed information, so you can use it to affect other particles. We had initial V-Ray 5 support, we had right cast from meshes, we had more example files, tie splint has an extrude mode, we have a tie bend modifier, so you can have segments along the bend axis, and you had an option to export spline data, plus a lot of more things as Tyson is doing every month. And as well, the VDB has been huge, so you can see that the examples, we had a lot of things using VDB in a very creative way, using it to modify UVs, to create all types of abstract uh, things, people is using it for modeling, a uh, really great improvement on Typeflow that if you are not using Typeflow right now, you should check it out, because it's not only a particle system anymore, it's a particle system, but a lot of modifiers has been improved that makes 3ds Max much, much better. Multi-thread, faster, new features, uh, download it, it's free right now, so check it out, guys. <laughs> 3DS London Meetup is happening June 3rd at 7 p.m. GMT plus one with talks from Resin Space, AMC, and Thomas Paul Visuals. Check it out, it's happening every month in YouTube. You can register right now, so remember to be able to see it. All Autodesk University will go online because a problem with COVID. The conference in Las Vegas that was scheduled in November will be totally online, as well all the international AU events in UK, India, Japan, China, and Germany. This month we had an area workshop that it's called UVs that friend that you wish you could better understand. It's already available, so if you miss it, you can enjoy the video. It's done by Logan Foster. Logan is a product owner on 3ds Max, and it's a very veteran 3ds Max guy, really experienced on video games and preparing assets for video games. It's giving a ton of information about ungrapping in 3ds Max, a lot of things that I didn't know, and a lot of cool tips and tricks that uh, you should check out. Okay, this is the first wall exclusive on this channel. The 23 of June, I will participate in an ARIA event. There will be happening different things that I cannot announce, but my part, I will cover a talk about destruction. I will try to don't go very technical. It will be a webinar covering different concepts that everyone can apply on destructions. I will try to don't be super software specific, so it will be general concepts about making your distractions look nicer, some compositing to have in mind, and some tips and tricks that you can use to make cooler distractions. Uh, so keep an eye on ARIA webpage to check for more details that they will announce next week, probably. So hope to see you there, guys. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons to make these videos possible. Really, it helps a lot to keep 
getting a little motivated to do these videos, it's a lot of effort. So please consider to donate something. And if not, please share the videos. It's super important. Share it, give it a comment. I love comments. Give it a like. And yeah, see you soon, guys.